Hey guys, welcome back. It's Missy. And if you're new here, welcome. I am a life and relationship coach and on this channel, we get to the root of the issue and we learn how to heal and deal. So if that's your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be a part of the fam. And don't forget to put the notifications on so you can be one of the first ones here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the codependent relationship. First things first, codependency is basically where you didn't feel validated as a child, you didn't feel heard, your needs weren't met. So the way to cope with that is that you then would fix, would people please, would take care of others to fill that void, fill the void of feeling unloved and not nurtured properly. Codependency is a way for you to be distracted from dealing your own feelings. It's a way for you to feel needed, to feel wanted, and to feel accepted. And it's also a matter of you feel lost when you're not needed. You are so used to taking care of others and self-sacrificing that when you're not, you don't know what to do with yourself. When you're codependent, most of the time you feel this emptiness. You feel like something's missing. And the way to temporarily fill it is by taking care of others, by fixing, by focusing on others. That's how you feel like that, that love jar, but it doesn't stay. You'll still feel that emptiness every once in a while because it's only a temporary fix. So usually you're codependent because of two reasons. One, you ha didn't have your needs met as a child where you had abusive parents, alcoholic parents, um, mentally ill parents, or on the other end, you could have codependent parents yourself or you saw your parents being very codependent. So you now lead by example because you can have really loving parents, but they may have been really codependent. They teach you how to be very codependent. And they do this by you seeing them rely heavily on each other. So there's no really individuality in their relationship or your parents made you feel like you needed them. Maybe the world was dangerous and you needed them in order to survive. And so they would overly be there for you and teach you not how to rely on yourself. So let's go into what it's like being in a codependent relationship. A lot of times there's emphasis that you, when you're in a codependent relationship, it's usually because you have an abuser, you have an alcoholic partner. That's not always the case. You could be really codependent on another codependent or you could be codependent on someone where you enable them. They could be a lazy person, calling myself out here because I've been there. You may be overcompensating for something that they lack. Maybe they're emotionally unavailable, so you'll be very codependent. You are really key on there's a certain person and you want them to meet your needs and you want to help them in some sort of way. So the first thing, when you're in a codependent relationship, you could be someone that has no real identity or individuality, or you have no real personal interest outside of that relationship. You may not know who you are, what you want, what you value, because you're so invested in this person and pleasing this person. You may notice yourself revolving your life around them waiting for their phone calls, waiting for them to make plans, allowing them to make all of the decisions. You know, you may be doing something important, but you will drop what you're doing just to be there for them or to be around them. The other thing is you feel like you need them. You may feel you need their approval of your decisions, their input, and their opinions on things that you say and do. And this could happen because of past abuse you've endured or current abuse you're enduring, which is then causing you to lack confidence in yourself. So because you feel like you need them, it can make you become really addicted to them. So you can become really addicted to having sex with them. You could be really addicted to getting help from them. You can be really addicted to being around them. You can be really addicted to helping them. So if there's ever an opportunity where even if they could do it for themselves, you'll immediately jump in like, hey, I can do that for you. Or do you need, do you need me? Do you need something from me? And at some point you may feel like you can't stop. You may feel like you can't not be around them. Like you can't say no to them. It can feel like it's an addiction because it is an addiction. Your brain fires off oxytocin, which is the love hormone and also the attachment hormone, which creates a bond. 
and dopamine, which is the happy pleasure hormone. So since you don't know how to validate yourself or love yourself or be happy alone and you feel that emptiness, you will then seek it outside of yourself, which is part of the neediness. Not only do you feel like you need them so that way you can be there for them and help them, but you also are needy yourself. And this neediness can be needing to talk to them, checking up on their social media, especially when you can't get a hold of them. Maybe getting upset when they talk to someone attractive, so you may be jealous. And again, this goes back to the lack of self-love and the lack of ability to validate yourself. You will try to find ways for them to validate you. You depend on them to make you feel good, to uplift you. You feel really validated like a whole person when you're around them because of that validation. They may not be needing your actual needs, but they fulfill that shallow feeling that you are needed because you were filling their needs. And so because you are constantly giving yourself to your partner, you're looking for the same in return, which the neediness goes into fear of abandonment. You know, fear of abandonment comes from you being abandoned when you were a young kid, you having inconsistent care, and you just overall not getting your needs met from the time when you were an if infant. So because you didn't have that strong bond or attachment to a caregiver, to your parent, you now fear others will abandon you and you'll never have that security as an adult or you'll never have that sense of belonging. So the insecure attachment and the fear of abandonment comes out in two ways. It comes out with you being overly needy where if your needs are not met, met then you will punish that person that you feel like should be meeting your needs or you will be avoidant and you can do both. So if you feel like they're not meeting your needs, you will punish them by ignoring them, by being passive aggressive, by maybe withholding love and affection from them. You want them to know in a subtle way that you're not happy about what happened, but you may not communicate what is actually going on. For instance, maybe you called them, they didn't answer your call and you really needed them at that moment, you are really feeling down. You may then punish them for it and you may not answer their calls. You want them to know you're pissed off, but you may not wanna face it and have an actual conversation with them about it. Cause confrontation can be scary. If you confront them, it will turn into maybe an argument and then they may leave which is one of your biggest fears. Or if you're in an abusive relationship, you're scared of the abuse that's to come. So it's safer to keep your mouth shut. But you could do both. You could be needy where you punish the person. You One of the punishments could be is that you wanna leave them or it's not working out for, for you. In reality, do you actually want that? No, but you're so afraid. You're like, I'm gonna cause it to happen. I'm gonna get them before they get me. You may self-sabotage and talk about leaving them or do things to cause them to want to leave because of that fear of abandonment. So you will avoid dealing with your feelings, but you still have that fear of abandonment. You still are terrified of them leaving. You avoid being alone. You have a real fear of being alone because when you're alone, you have to deal with your feelings and you avoid dealing with your feelings. So you will really fear them leaving, which in turn, can cause them to leave. Because when you hold on to something really tightly, it eventually tries to escape. You know, same thing with a fish. When you hold on to a slippery fish, it will, you know, jump out of your hands. It will slip right out of your hands. That's what happens with that fear of abandonment. You try to hold on really tightly. And so you will be overly needy or you'll be avoidant, which then causes your fear to happen. Another thing is you always put your needs last. So because you constantly seek the approval of your partner and you're constantly trying to get that validation, you will overly self-sacrifice and you will always look to your partner to see what they need first before yourself. It's really hard for you to recognize your wants and needs and for you to ask for them. And you also may feel responsible for your partner's feelings. So because of that, you don't wanna make your feelings apparent. You don't want it to seem like you have needs because they matter first. If they don't, if you feel like they're not getting their needs met, you feel like then you will not feel validated as a person and you'll feel worthless. So you will take responsibility for their feelings, for everything that's going on with them to meet what you think are your needs. But in reality, 
your needs are not really being met. You are just overly self-sacrificing. And in your wiring, you have believed that's the way you feel like a whole person. How you feel fulfilled is when everyone else is taken care of. But at the end of the day, you still feel that emptiness and that sadness because in reality, your needs are not being met. Which goes to the next point is you don't communicate your feelings. So because you completely have lost yourself in taking care of other people, you don't identify with your feelings. You have no idea how you actually feel. You maybe know the basics of like, I'm angry, I'm sad, but you don't realize what causes it. And you have no idea what you want. You don't know how to tell someone, hey, this bothers me, or hey, I'm feeling this type of way. You don't feel like you have a voice or you matter, so you don't even try. So you're completely out of touch with yourself and your emotions and what you feel, and so you will avoid conflict because of this. Conflict means displeasing your partner. It means potential abuse, potential negativity. Conflict means potentially hurting someone else's feelings. Conflict means potentially getting someone's disapproval. Conflict means dealing with uncomfortable feelings. Those are all things that you have a really hard time with. So you will try to suppress your feelings. You make yourself not matter because when you were a child, you didn't feel like you mattered. So now as an adult, you don't know what it's like to feel like you matter, to feel like you have feelings and feel like you can speak about things. And it doesn't result in a disaster that's foreign. But this suppression and this fear of conflict can turn into random spurts of aggression or it can turn into passive aggressiveness where you indirectly show your anger. It's an indirect way to deal with your conflict. So you may suppress and really push down your feelings just so that way you don't have to deal with them and you don't have to deal with any type of conflict or displeasing your partner. Also, another thing is when you are codependent, you're more prone to abusive relationships, manipulative people, toxic people. This is because you have traits abusers like narcissists seek out, like the people pleasing, the fixing, the self-sacrificing, the enabling. So it makes you more susceptible to manipulation, getting taken advantage of, physical abuse, or sexual abuse. And these people play on your self-doubt and your need to please to continue the abuse. The next thing is you can be really controlling. Because you give away all of your control by not making decisions for yourself, by taking care of your partner too much, by thinking about everyone else, you give away all your control, you will become controlling in other ways. Like when you're helping your partner, you may, may be really controlling, like you should do this and you need to do these things. Or you will try to control things that are completely out of your control. You just look for maybe different ways that you can gain some sort of control, even with like your future. You may try to control your future, control the way people perceive you, control the narrative that you're portraying. So you really will focus on things completely out of your control just so you can have some sort of control. You'll try to control your partner. You're trying to control because maybe you're trying to help them. You want them to be better in some sort of way, but in turn that hurts you. And then that causes you to be resentful, but you will do anything to gain some sort of control because you don't realize that you're giving away your control. Another thing is you do too much. So you will overly give, you will overly help. And because you do too much and you sacrifice yourself so much, you then will become resentful because you're not receiving the same thing in return. You are someone where you think about others too much and that's not the norm, that's unhealthy. And so sometimes you may do things in the hopes that maybe someone else will treat you that way. But at the end of the day, a lot of people don't function like that. And so you will just be disappointed and frustrated and feel resentful, especially towards your partner, because they're not doing the same things that you're doing because your expectations are way too high. And again, the way that you feel like your needs are met on a shallow level is when you do things for others. That's how you feel that validation. So again, you can be addicted to doing too much. And you also may do too much in the hopes of that approval. Oh, like they like me, they approve of me. But in reality, it just winds up hurting yourself. And it also hurts your self-esteem and it hurts your self-worth because 
you don't get those same things in return. The next thing is you lack boundaries. So you may say yes when you need to actually say no. You never really check in with yourself and see how you feel about something. You're kind of maybe go with the flow or you are afraid of saying no. You may feel like you can't say no. So you always constantly will do things that other people want. You'll do things your partner wants. You maybe have taught that you can't say no. You always have to think about the other person. That's really selfish. You may feel guilty for saying no, or you may feel guilty for thinking about yourself. Like that's not allowed. So you will allow things to happen that you should not allow happen, or you will do things that you don't really want to do because of maybe that fear of what could happen. And not only maybe the fear, but also because you're addicted to those feelings of validated, loved, approved of. So you don't really know how to have healthy boundaries. You don't really know how to say no, and you don't really know what you want and what you do not want. So now that we talked about what a codependent relationship looks like, how do you handle this? Well, one, you need to have more individuality. You need to take away time from your partner and you need to tell yourself, I don't need them, I want them. You need to fulfill your own needs and you need to think about you. What do you want? What makes you happy? What makes you unhappy? Who are you? What makes you you? And you need to say no more. You need to set healthy boundaries and you need to lower your expectations for yourself so you're not overly giving, you're not overly helping to the point where you're self-sacrificing and you're resentful. And you need to learn that you can give yourself your own needs. That emptiness you're feeling is the lack of self-love. It's a lack of nurturing and warm, fuzzy feelings for yourself. That's how you heal that wound. That's how you heal that hole, is by loving yourself and fulfilling your own needs. So what do you need? Maybe you need more people in your life. Maybe you need more emotional connections. Maybe you need your own hobby. What's something creative you can get interested in? Maybe you need to, more time with music or arts or dancing. Maybe you wanna do more cooking for yourself. You need that balance of thinking about yourself, checking in with yourself, and then giving your partner their needs afterwards. You know, relationships all about give and take, but you're doing too much giving. Think of ways you can fulfill your own needs. And also, you need to learn how to ask for your needs. So identify what you need, and then if you need help from someone else, if you need something from someone else, learn how to ask for it. And know it's okay to ask for it. It's okay to ask for emotional support. It's okay to ask others for things. But in balance, it's important to first be confident in yourself, validate yourself, try things for yourself first and then ask for help when you need it. Part of life is being able to know when you can do things for yourself and also knowing when you need to ask for help. I have a video on setting boundaries, how to say no, and also I have a whole video on eight tools you need to heal codependency, which I really recommend. So what do you guys think? Leave it all in the comments below and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share with someone you think may need it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye guys. Funny story, I got my hair caught in a blow dryer this morning. I, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that happened, but I, my life flashed before my eyes and I literally thought I was gonna have to wear a toupee or a wig for the rest of my life. A toupee, Does boys wear toupees, why would I wear a toupee? You may, oh, which kind of goes into your fear of abandonment that you feel like should be needing your meat. I put my lights on too bright and now I can't see. Oh, highly sensitive ass. So it makes you more susceptible, susceptible, Why am I having such a hard word time with them? Susceptible.